My grandmother is 92 years old. She has photo ID. She needs it to go to the doctor. She needs it to pick up prescriptions. The idea that senior citizens won't be able to vote is nonsense. It's going to eliminate election day registration, they say. Absolute nonsense. Nothing in the amendment calls for that. Nothing in statute would imply that that's going to happen. It's a desperate lie and nothing more. But we need to spend some money getting out there, getting this message out, refuting those lies, using logic and reason to explain how the amendment works and what it doesn't do. Now, we've got a, a great privilege today of having um, a wonderful author and speaker, John Fund, come to join us. He's the author of this book. If you haven't already got a copy, you can get them out in front. It's Who's Counting? How Fraudsters and Bureaucrats Put Your Vote at Risk. The first chapter of this book heavily features Minnesota. It covers all of the problems that we've had in our election system. And this book offers some common sense solutions that we're employing right now with the voter ID amendment. If it weren't for John Fund, the media attention that we've got in Minnesota on our election problems might not have ever happened from the local press. In order to get the local press to cover our election problems, we had to first go to the national press. And John Fund was a champion for our cause and helped make sure that we were published in the Wall Street Journal, uh, Fox News, and got the word out to a point that the local press could no longer ignore the problem. So with that, I will introduce John Fund. I think all the people who read the publications I appear in or the networks I appear on are in this room, so the least I can do is come and thank you for helping me pay my salary. <laughs> I want to take a slightly different tack tonight because I know there are a lot of people who are going to hear a lot of things about the voter ID amendment and they're concerned because let me be clear what our goal is. My goal and I think our goal is this. It's what Democratic Senator Chris Dodd said when we passed the Bipartisan Help America Vote Act which by the way says Contrary to the opponents of this amendment, a military ID is a government-issued ID. It is valid, and no military personnel will be denied the right to vote. That is federal law which trumps state law. What Chris Dodd, the Democratic Senator from Connecticut, now retired, said is, this is America. We can make it easy to vote and hard to cheat. That is our goal. We can do both at the same time. Time. They are not in conflict. We have two civil rights when it comes to voting. One is we want to make sure that no one is prevented from voting, no one is intimidated from voting, no one is blocked from voting. We fought a great civil rights struggle in the 1960s to make sure that happened. We passed the Voting Rights Act. We need to preserve and extend those gains. That civil right is well known. There's another civil right not as well known, but that's what this amendment is all about. You can be disenfranchised. You can have your vote canceled out if someone votes, cancels out your vote because they're an illegal alien, because they're a felon who doesn't have the right to vote, they're dead. We have two million dead people on the voter rolls according to the Pew Research Center, which is a respected nonpartisan group. Look, I believe we should honor our dead, but I do not believe in representation. I do not believe in representation, not restoration. People can vote in different states. College students have been known to do this. Today, today, the Democratic congressional candidate in Maryland, Wendy Rogers, had to resign her position because it was discovered she had voted in both Florida and Maryland in four separate elections. But there is no voter fraud. Bill Clinton land-based attempts to clean up the voter rolls last week at the Democratic Convention in Charlotte. Two hours before he mounted the podium, back in his home state of Arkansas, a Democratic state legislator, a Democratic city councilman from West Memphis, and a police official in West Memphis had to resign because they had just been convicted of 45 counts of voter fraud. But there is no voter fraud. Eric Holder, the Attorney General of the United States of America, 
has lived in the same Washington neighborhood for 32 years. Last May in the, in the primary, a 22-year-old punk kid, white, with an earring and a beard, walked up to a poll official at his precinct and said, do you have an Eric Holder at such and such an address? Didn't even say he was Eric Holder. Was handed his ballot. He didn't vote it, that would have been a crime, but seriously, this is easy. Voter fraud is like an iceberg. One-tenth above the surface, nine-tenths below the surface. If you're voting in the name of one of the two million dead people in this country, how likely is it one of those dead people is going to complain about it? <laughs> now, this is nonpartisan. I've been in Kentucky. A few weeks ago, the presiding county judge who runs the whole county government in Clay County, Kentucky, a Republican, and the Republican superintendent of public instruction and Republican city councilman were convicted for voter fraud. A methamphetamine gang had paid $400,000 to steal enough votes to make sure they wouldn't be bothered because they were to elect their friends to run the county government and they would leave them alone. Voter fraud can happen everywhere. In Kentucky, of course, the price of a stolen vote is not 20 or 40 bucks, it's a fifth of bourbon. It has to be the best kind of bourbon. <laughs> Voter fraud happens in both parties. No party has a monopoly on virtue. Political power is tempting. We are all fallen creatures. That's why we have to take away some temptation by making voter fraud a risky activity, not a risk-free activity. <laughs> now, I debated County Attorney Freeman today. It was interesting. Even he would not defend Minnesota's quaint practice of allowing someone to vouch for 15 people without ID at the polls. 15! He said two or five. He couldn't even be pushed to 15. That tells you something is wrong. Let me tell you what's wrong. These are documented facts. Al Franken won by 312 votes in 2008. Disputed votes. We now know through the work of Minnesota Majority, 1,099 felons voted illegally in that election. That should concern everyone. We also know that 6,244 people who registered the same day and voted the same day in 2008, we sent out the voter registration Verification to their address, it came back undelivered, unknown person, unknown address. It came back from parking lots, it came back from Taco Bells, it came back from county government buildings where no one lives. Who are these people? They all voted, we can't take their votes back, but in an election with 312 vote margin, I say we should be concerned about those 6,244 people. Yeah. 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 And, and the felons, you know, we had to prove intent to prosecute any of those illegal felon voters. The prosecutors would not go after anyone who simply said, look, I made a mistake, I forgot I didn't have the right to vote, you know how it is. So you had to be a felon, dumb enough, and you know, felons are dumb, that's how they got caught. <laughs> felons had to be dumb enough to say, yeah, I voted and I knew I couldn't vote, and what's it to you, copper? <laughs> we now have a couple shy of 200 people convicted of voting in that election illegally. Now, that's the good news. The bad news is, the typical sentence was a $50 fine. Wow. That's what people pay to buy bum someone's vote. We need to clean up this system. Now, you're going to hear a lot about people who are prevented from voting. Let me be very clear here. You cannot function in this society without a photo ID. You can't visit the doctor. You can't get social security. You can't get a welfare benefit. You can't travel. You can't buy Sudafed at the pharmacy. You can't buy alcohol. You can't buy liquor. You can't enter a federal building to complain about voter ID. You can't do anything. You can't marry, gay or otherwise, without an ID in any state. You have to have an ID. If there are people who don't have one, if they're living off the grid, if they're living in caves, if they're in a nursing home, I say, and here I agree with Andrew Young, the former UN ambassador and confidant of Martin Luther King, let's get them an ID. You can't be part of the mainstream of American life without an ID. Sure. If this amendment passes, my advice to you is let's have the biggest outreach campaign in Minnesota history. 
However many people don't have an ID, let's get them an ID. They will then be fully functioning members of our society, and we should say everyone has an ID. Yeah. Now, we're also told over and over again, you know the last refuge of scoundrels used to be to evoke patriotism. We are told over and over again that this is discriminatory and racist. Well, a few days before Bill Clinton last year attacked voter ID as the functional equivalent of the Jim Crow poll tax, the state legislature in Rhode Island passed a photo ID law. The state legislature in Rhode Island is eight to one Democratic. The sponsor of the photo ID bill in Rhode Island was Harold Metz, the only African American state senator and Democrat. He said, I'm tired of my constituents having their votes stolen out from under them by the machine. He's not part of the machine. The sponsor in the State House in Rhode Island was Gideon Fox, the only African American speaker that body has ever had. The governor who signed into the law was Lincoln Chafee, that well-known non-conservative who left the Republican Party because he said it was far too conservative. This did happen in Kansas. The majority of Democratic legislators in Kansas voted for photo ID. In New Hampshire, they provided the key votes to override the veto and pass photo ID in the New Hampshire government. This does not have to be a partisan issue. I appeal to all Minnesotans, let's make it easy to vote, easy to get an ID, and hard to cheat. Yeah. We can do all three. You will hear military can't vote. We know that's not true. You will hear senior citizens can't vote. Look, in Pennsylvania, they brought in 12 witnesses for the voter ID case there in front of the court, and they all claimed they couldn't vote. The judge looked at every case and said, you can vote. You can either have get an ID easily, you can vote absentee, you can show up at the polls and have a provisional ballot, and then you can email or fax or walk in with your identification. And by the way, even in Pennsylvania, if you just sign an affidavit saying, I can't afford the documentation to get an ID, your vote will be counted. The judge said, none of these people will have their vote disenfranchised. So he ruled in favor of the voter ID law. You know what happened the next morning after his decision? The chief witness for the ACLU, a 93-year-old woman who said she'd had her purse stolen and she didn't have an ID, she went down to the bus stop, she rode the bus down to the DMV, and she got her ID and held it up for the Philadelphia Inquirer photographers. They didn't know she was coming, she got no special treatment, and her lawyers burst a gasket. <laughs> I have to say this, and I don't say this normally. Politics is a rough and tumble business, but I have never seen, except in the voter ID issue, people who are willing to just make stuff up. <laughs> Look, there are facts and there's fantasy. And I have to tell you, the advantage you're gonna have is you have the facts on your side and they have the fantasy. <laughs> now, they say, they say voter ID will be expensive. And I say to you, what is public confidence in the integrity of election worth? What is not having the feeling that so many Minnesotans have that the 2008 Senate race was so messed up you can't trust the results? What is the price of that? I say it's priceless because it's democracy. We spend a lot of money making sure we can detect any counterfeit bill in our pocket, in our, in our stores. Any counterfeit bill. The Secret Service's job is not protecting the president, it's tracking down counterfeit currency. The currency of democracy are our votes. Let's spend at least as much time tracking down fraudulent votes as we spend tracking down counterfeit bills. Which is more important? Our democracy or our currency? I say they're both important. <laughs> Lastly, this is up to you. You have the majority on your side, but I can assure you, you will be outspent. And I just have to tell you, if you present the facts, if you tell people, as has been mentioned, every country in the world, every industrialized democracy, has an ID provision. We are the outliers. Canada, Canada has a nationwide ID law. By the way, they do let people vouch one time, one person. So, for you in Minnesota, you are going to be the headlines in November. You're the only state in the country that is voting on this issue with the people participating. 
I believe you will win, I believe you can win. I wrote this book in large part because people from Minnesota were so upset about what happened in 2008, and they said never again. I say it is to the benefit of all people, people in all parties, that we don't have another Florida-style meltdown like we had in the Bush v. Gore recount, where 40% or more of the country thought the winner was illegitimate. We shouldn't have another meltdown like we had in Minnesota, where over 40% of the state thought the winner was illegitimate. Let's ensure the integrity of our election. So all of us, despite all of the hurly-burly of politics and how tough it is, we at least agree the election was fair, the winner was legitimate, and we can move on. Thank you.